Hi, it's Jason from the Erie Tool Works Company. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble a 1038 mill barrel. Uh, the 1038 mill barrel is an iconic mill barrel in Canada. It's the number one contractor mill barrel in the country. So today I'm going to make your life easier by showing you how to assemble it properly. So if you come over here, the first step I recommend is you get out the instruction set and make sure that you've got all the required parts it says in the instruction set. Next, you're going to need to grab yourself a socket. I recommend a half inch deep socket as well as a 9 16 and to complement that, it's always good to have an adjustable wrench because you may need a wrench in the assembly. All right, in this step, we're going to be, this is the first step, we're going to put the wooden wedge and connect it to the handle. So what we're going to do is take the wooden wedge that you see here, uh, it's got a cut out piece at the front, and it's got this pilot hole. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a long bolt that is supplied in the parts garden. We're going to put it up through there, and this is just going to hold it in place. And you get that on like that. And then you're going to take the nail that's supplied, put it in the pilot hole just like that, and then just use a hammer. That's going to hold it right in place just like that. All right, the second step is we're going to attach the under tray braces, which is a unique feature at Erie. It gives the tray a lot of support to the bottom of the tray through these clips that we see here that make our tray seamless. So if you come over here, you'll see that this under tray brace has got a, 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 an elevated portion right here. This is the Erie logo on it. You're going to take it, you're going to take these short bolts, so the short bolts that are supplied, you're going to slide them into that groove. So you'll see that they don't spin there because of a, of a fairly tight tolerance. And then you're going to slide this other bolt into this one. And then what you're going to do is put that on like that. Again, with the beveled edge down towards the tray. Now you're going to do this on both the front and you're also going to take the longer one and do it to the rear of the tray. Okay, so the next step is, so what we've done is we've taken the cross braces. We have the short cross brace, the long cross brace goes to the back or towards the user. We've also noted that the indentation on this casting here is pushing down towards the bottom of the tray. So it's providing that under tray support. What we've done in this step is we've left the bolts and nuts loose. So now we can start putting bolts through these uh, brackets. So in the parts carton, there are two really long bolts and your two bolts that are slightly shorter. Uh, the long bolts are going to be the ones that go in the front because they have to go all the way through uh, the bracket, the wooden wedge and the wooden handle. So all you're going to do is just slide this forward because it's not going to I'm going to put this up through just like that and then put it back into place. Do that to that side and do the same thing over on this side. Okay, the next step what we're going to do here is we're going to assemble the leg assembly. So you've got to look to make sure you have your legs. Uh, they look like this, shaped like a V. The, the one with the holes is the back section. That's the section we're going to be working on. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the two legs and you're going to find a long cross brace. It's kind of shaped a little bit like a bowl here. And you're going to attach this brace like this from leg to leg. And then you're going to take the other braces and you're going to attach them through the middle like that and create what looks like a K. Uh, in about two minutes, I'll have this done and I'll come back and show you how this goes together. Okay, so the leg assembly is now complete. If you just wanna come over here, I'll show you what we've done. So you're gonna have three holes along the back. You're gonna utilize the bottom hole. You're gonna use the hex bolts that it comes with and you're gonna have the long brace that goes left to right. Then you're gonna use the smaller braces to create what we call as a K brace. Uh, looks like a K if you stand it up and you're gonna tie it through the middle and then tie it into the ends. At this stage, we do not recommend you uh, tightening this up with a socket, just hand tight at this point in time. Okay, at this stage, we're gonna go back to the tray. Uh, we've put in the under braces, uh, the under tray braces, we've hand tightened them. We've got the longest bolts at the front because they've gotta go through obviously the depth of the wooden handle and the wedge. And we've got the shorter bolts on the back. And what we're going to do at this stage is we're gonna put a handle set onto the actual uh, tray of the wheelbarrow. So generally you just start like this. Once you get one started, get back here. Get the other one done and it's just as easy. Okay, at this stage we've got both handles mounted to the cross braces using the longest bolts up front, the little ones that are a little bit shorter back here. Um, I have tightened these down so they're fairly snug now, not overly tight. 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leg assembly and I'm going to use the, the amount of material that's protruding through here to attach the legs to the actual handles. So obviously the K-brace is at the back. We line up the holes. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same on the front. So I'm just going to come around here. Just takes a little bit of a push. And there you have it. So now we're at the stage that we're going to be putting on the wheel assembly. So just to recap the last couple of steps, we've put the legs on. Uh, I was able to put the, the nuts on it, the serrated nuts. I did fasten them down a little bit. Again, not overly tight. I did, took a couple turns with the socket just to firm that up a little bit. Now I'm coming to the front of the wheelbarrow here and I'm gonna put in these axle brackets. So these axle brackets have a cutout portion and they have two holes in them so they look exactly like that. You're gonna put one here and you're also gonna put one over here on this side. And what these do is these are gonna hold the axle in position and they're gonna be fastened by these U-bolts. Uh, this is a U-bolt right here. And you can see that it's gonna go through this way and hold the axle when it's in place. So this step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the nuts on the back side of this, not tighten it because we're gonna to have to insert the axle with the roller and the bearing at the next step. Okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to you about the wheel assembly. Uh, this model that we're doing here is a 1038 wheelbarrow, which comes with a flat free tire. Erie was the first to launch the flat free tire a little over 20 years ago. Um, this particular tire comes with a grease fitting right here. On occasion, you may find that grease fitting is a little loose. You may want to snug that up if it's not tight. This one here is perfect, so that's fantastic. Uh, comes on a steel hub. Uh, and what I'm going to do is show you how to put the axle and the bearing into the hub. So this is a heavy duty roller bearing. So it's 2.25 inches by 1.375. It does come with a thin layer of grease. So be careful where you set that down. And all you're going to do is you're basically going to remove the large cotter pin from the one side. You're going to remove the large washer, the felt washer, as well as this little washer here that you got at the bottom. I put that little stack over here. Then you're going to come over here you have to wiggle it just a little bit here, but I'll show you here. Just go like that, slide it through, and then you're just gonna spin it around like that, and you're just gonna reverse the steps by putting on small washer, felt washer, large washer, a little bit of support on that side, and then you're gonna come around right here, and you're just gonna put that cotter pin through like that. So now your tire is assembled. All right, so this step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wheel assembly that we just completed, and we're gonna insert it onto the wheelbarrow. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to bring this through here. We're going to put the axle through that one. And then over here, I'm going to put the axle here and just rest it because we have to pull them together. And then we're going to bring the wheelbarrow handles just together like this. Pull this up a little bit. Just like that. See, I've left the wheelbarrow, the other parts loose. So this whole, mo whole thing moves when we put it together. And then you just pinch that together like that and we're going to fasten down the u-bolts and the, uh, the uh, tire assembly will be complete so remember at this stage we've left everything fairly loose so things are adjustable and we'll tighten everything down at the end now what we're going to do is we're going to put on the front tray brace so what you're going to do is it really comes with two angles on it, it has the erie diamond on it one is fairly steep we'll call that a 75 degree angle this one over here is more like a 45 degree angle so what happens is if you take a look the second bolt hole down from the end uh, is where you're going to put the, the 75 degree angle and what you're going to do is you're going to put the one of the long bolts up through this to hold it in position like that. and then on the bottom we're going to put in one of these small nuts that you see right here one of these nuts we're going to drop it in there and uh, just like this we're going to drop it put it through here first and me and you're going to put it back and then drop it in like that. And now what you're just going to do is put on the nuts and fasten it down. All right, the second last step before we tighten everything down, we're going to put on the nose iron. So it's branded Erie. It's a heavy duty, uh, all steel nose iron, top and bottom. What I'm going to do is take it, put it on the end like this. Just have to give it a bit of a wiggle. Make sure the holes line up. And once I see the holes lining up, I know that it's in perfect alignment. And still note that we haven't really fastened anything down tight yet. Everything's kind of hand tight. Then I'm going to take a bolt. Just going to slide the bolt through the hole. As you see there, I'm going to put another on the other side. I'm going to do that to both sides. Okay, so now the wheelbarrow is assembled, it's time to go around and fasten everything down. So I like to use a deep socket, a half inch deep socket. 
and I kind of repeat the steps as they started and all the way through to the end. So things that I've done near the end, I'm gonna tighten up near the end. So I'm gonna start with fastening down nice and snug the cross braces, then I'm gonna go up to the handles, tighten down the assembly, make some final adjustments to the tire because it can just be placed a little bit more in the center, and then tighten up the final bolts near the front. All right, so by now, about 40 minutes later, your wheelbarrow is assembled. Um, it does help to have an extra set of hands. I didn't, I didn't mention that at the beginning, but that's also helpful. I'm just going to take you through some of the features that make the 1038 a unique product. So, first of all, we've got premium 64 inch hardwood handles. And because we're utilizing these cross braces that you see here, the handles are actually riding off the side of the tray. So, what does that do? It gives you more lateral stability because the handles are really nice and wide. So, as you get a heavy load of concrete in here that weighs 400 plus pounds, you can control the load. Second of all, it's got a nice core style of nose. It's completely seamless, so nothing's going to get caught around any bolts, and it's able to direct concrete and heavy materials where you want it to go. Underneath the tray, right over here, rolled underneath here, we have a 516 steel rod, so that gives it a lot of rigidity in the tray. And if you're in the concrete trades and you're hitting your shovel against the side of the of the tub and you're putting mortar back into the tray, you're not going to have a, a crack here and have a seam that's going to open up to you, open up for you. So that's a nice feature to have. Other than that, it's got the only uh, contractor tray in Canada with the uh, cross braces in it. It's got a nice heavy duty undercarriage. It's got a beautiful flat free tire. It also comes with a grease nipple on it so you can grease it on site quickly and easily. Just fasten on that right there and give it about five pumps of grease and you're good to go. Other than that, this is the leading wheelbarrow on the market for the contractor. And if you're looking for a good wheelbarrow, look to buy the Erie 1038.